guys doing? So welcome to Mastering You. And one of the things that I want to talk about today is the fact that when I was a kid, I was one of those kids who always questioned everything. Now, in this one, I'm not asking you to question your religion. This is not about you believing in one religion or the other or one being greater than the other. This is about how when I was a child, I had this certain question that could not be answered by any pastor that I ever came across. And even those who thought they could answer never really gave me a sufficient answer that made sense. So over years and years of study, I come to understand the actual answer. You see, when I was a child, there was a minister and he would preach this sermon about how wealthy, if you believe and follow the Bible, that, you, that you're supposed to live this life of abundance. But then I would look around the church and what I see was people who was in lack of abundance. I would see people who they would get up and they would dance and they would sing and they would praise and, and they, they would shout and they would get very emotionally caught up. And, you know, throughout the week, they're studying, they're reading their Bible. These were good people and they would do all these things according to what they believed. But yet this life of abundance just not with them. It was not for them. And it's not just financial. You see, wealth is financial. Money is financial. But abundance, happiness was not with them. You know, they found happiness and joy in their reading and their studying, but happiness within their family wasn't there. The happiness within their relationships, the way they lived their lives, their, the health of their body, all these different things of abundance was not part of their life. And so I began to ask the question, I said, well, if, if, if you're supposed to have this life of abundance by following this book, then why are so many people in pain and not receiving this life of abundance? And the ministers would look at me and it was like, you're just a child. Stop asking these questions. And so eventually I began to be kicked out of churches because I asked too many questions. And this is not just to single out Christianity. When I studied Islam, the same effect would occur. I would see those who were in the, 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 the mosque and those who were successful and they were having happy lives and they were gain, obtaining wealth and they were doing all these things that were, if they follow what they were being taught, they were the book, they were receiving it. Just the same as I saw Christians, if they follow what they were taught, they were receiving it. But then there were so many who did not. And then later when I studied Buddhism and the Tao and so many other isms, I saw the same thing. And then it clicked for me one day. One day, Eureka! It is not that one group, one learning, one teaching is the only way that people reach abundance. It was the mere fact that the level of faith and activity that a person had based on their faith is what gave them abundance. It what gave them joy and happiness and peace. You see, I can preach to you that you should be able to save a tenth of everything that you earn and then reinvest that. I can teach you that you are as a husband to love your wife as Christ loved the church or I can teach you that you are to take care and protect your family, that you are to sacrifice for your family and, and you are to love your children. I can teach you and tell you this and you can have faith in it and believe it and read it. But the true faith comes in your actions. See, if you don't display it, it doesn't happen for you. And that's what I realized the most is that no matter what the religion, they were all telling husbands to be the same way towards their wives, to be loving and caring, to raise their children in an upright manner. Each one is telling you to be honest in your doings. Each one tells you that you should count the cost and before you venture out, you should make sure that you understand the business in that venture that you're going into. Each one also tells you that you should save more than you actually, um, you, should, you shouldn't spend more than you receive. Each one tells you to be charitable to your community. Each one tells you to love your neighbor. Each one tells you these things. And by following those, you will receive abundance in life. But the problem is, is that most people don't follow them. You, we go to the churches, the synagogue, the mosque. We go to the temple and we get excited and we get caught up and we feel connected. But then we go out into the world and we don't do what it says we're supposed to do. I realize that there are, the reason why there are rich, I'm going to use money as an example, the reason why there are wealthy Christians and wealthy Buddhists and wealthy um, Muslims and wealthy Hindus is because they have a true faith that they follow the principles of their faith that they believe that they are supposed to receive these things, that they believe that God is there for them and that the abundance of the universe is theirs to receive, that they can go out and create these things. And even the atheists, 
believe that what is here and present is something for them to be able to receive if they put forth the action because they understand that there are certain laws that govern everything regardless of what your ism is. You see, the law of cause and effect says that if I commit to this action, then the effect should be this. If it's not, then I commit another cause that brings another effect. And as long as you consistently do that and you see the ripples and you study the cause and effect, you will continue to move up the polarity scale of wealth. But the moment that you sit back and you just wait for the effect and let other people be the cause, let other situations in life be the cause, then you will never receive it, which is a lack of your faith because each faith tells you to be the causal factor. No faith tells you just to be the effect. No faith tells you to sit idly by. So when you go to synagogue, when you go to worship this week, weekend, whenever you do it, when you study the rituals and the books that you read, understand that you are the causal factor of the effects that you receive in your life. And the more that you go out and create the cause, you will receive the effect. But you got to have a strong faith in what you believe. Don't worry about what the Muslim believe, the Christian or anybody else. Focus on your belief. Focus on your causal factors and how you're supposed to be based on your beliefs. Stay strong in yours and don't worry about who agrees with you and who don't. Because what's inside you is what's going to bring about your abundance in life. So y'all have a great day. Continue to master you because your greatness is non-negotiable and so is mine.